This video works out the equation for the tangent plane to a surface. In calculus one, one way to think of the tangent line to a curve at a point is that the tangent line is the line that best approximates the curve at that point. It heads in the same direction as the curve. Usually, the tangent line lies on one side or the other of the curve at that point, but sometimes the tangent line can cut clear through the curve. Going up a dimension, we're going to talk about tangent planes to surfaces. The tangent plane to a surface at a given point, we can think of that as the plane that best approximates the surface at that point. We can also think of the tangent plane as the plane that goes in the same direction as the surface at that point. But it's a little more confusing to think about the direction of a plane, since a plane has many lines in it that all go in different directions. So it's easier to think about the perpendicular or normal direction to the plane. You can think of a tangent plane as the plane that has the same normal vector as the surface at that point. In this animation, I'm starting with a plane that doesn't approximate the surface very well, but I'm gradually modifying it to get a good approximating plane, the tangent plane. Like with tangent lines, tangent planes usually lie on one side of the surface or the other at the point. But sometimes the tangent plane cuts right through the surface. Let's find the tangent plane to the surface z equals y squared minus x squared at the point 1, 2, 3, shown here. Intuitively, it makes sense that the tangent plane should contain tangent lines for curves on the surface that go through that point. And we'll use that intuition to build up an equation for the tangent plane. In this figure, this is the x-axis, and the z-axis is up here, so the y-axis is hidden in the back where we can't see it. The red curve corresponds to fixing x at 1 and letting y vary. Since z is equal to y squared minus x squared, if we fix x at 1, we have that z is equal to y squared minus 1. This is a curve within the vertical plane given by x equals 1. The tangent line to this curve should have slope given by dz dy at y equal 2 since we're focusing on the point here where y is 2. Since dz dy is equal to 2y, if we evaluate that at y equals 2, we get 4. That slope of 4 means as we go over by one unit in the y direction, our tangent line should be going up by 4 units in the z direction. Of course, that tangent vector is not going to move at all in the x direction since we're fixing x equals 1. Therefore, the tangent vector, I'll call it v, should have components 0 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction, and 4 in the z direction. I'll draw v on the picture here in orange. Moving on to the blue curve, that's the curve we get when we fix y constant and vary x. So y is going to be fixed at 2. And the blue curve corresponds to the curve where the plane y equals 2 intersects the graph of our surface. Please pause the video and do a similar computation to this one to find the tangent vector to the blue curve. Since z is equal to y squared minus x squared and y is fixed at 2, we know that the blue curve has the equation z equals 2 squared minus x squared. In other words, z equals 4 minus x squared. The slope of the tangent vector to the blue curve should be given by dz dx at x equals 1, since I'm varying x and keeping y constant. And I'm looking at the point with these coordinates, so x is 1. dz dx is equal to negative 2x, and evaluating that at x equals 1 gives a slope of negative 2. Therefore, the tangent vector in the direction of the blue curve should be given by going over one unit in the x direction, not moving at all in the y direction, and going down two units in the z direction. 
That's not readily apparent from the picture where it looks like the tangent vector is maybe more flat, but it's at least plausible that the tangent vector is heading downwards at that point. Now that I've found two vectors that should lie in the tangent plane, it's easy to find the normal vector to the tangent plane just by taking the cross product of these two vectors. So I'll write n for normal vector is equal to v cross w and compute that cross product. Expanding out, I get i times negative 2 minus j times negative 4 plus k times negative 1. In other words, my normal vector is the vector negative 2, 4, negative 1. Now that I have the normal vector to the plane and a point in the plane, it's easy to write down the equation for the plane. That will be negative 2 times x minus 1 plus 4 times y minus 2 minus 1 times z minus 3 equals 0. This equation can also be written as negative 2x plus 4y minus z is equal to 3. Here is a computer rendering of the tangent plane. Now that we've worked out one example, we can use the same steps to find the general formula for the tangent plane of a general surface, z equals f of x, y, at a general point, x naught, y naught, z naught. First, we can let x stay fixed at x naught and vary y to look at this red curve and find its tangent vector. And then we can hold y fixed at y naught to look at this curve and find its tangent vector. The red curve is given by z equals f of x naught y, and so the tangent line to that curve has slope given by dz dy at y equals y naught. That's the same thing as f sub y of x naught y at y equals y naught, or in other words, f sub y of x naught y naught. Now when we look at the blue curve, we're looking at the curve given by z equals f of x y naught. For this blue curve, we're fixing y and varying x, so it will have a tangent line with slope dz dx at x equals x naught, that is f sub x of x y naught at x equals x naught, or in other words, f sub x at x naught y naught. The tangent vector for the red curve, I'll call it v, it's not going anywhere in the x direction. x is fixed at x naught, so its component in the x direction is 0. As we go over one unit in the y direction, we're going up by the slope. In other words, we're going up by f sub y, x naught, y naught, in the z direction. Similarly, we can find the vector w that's tangent to the blue curve by noticing that as we go over 1 in the x direction, y is not changing, but z is going up by the slope f sub x of x naught y naught. As before, we can find the normal vector to the tangent plane by taking the cross product of our two tangent vectors. Writing this out in components, I get this. And expanding the determinant, I get f sub x at x naught y naught times i minus negative f sub y at x naught y naught times j plus negative k. That can be rewritten as the vector with components f sub x, f sub y, and negative 1. Since the tangent plane goes through the point x naught, y naught, z naught, I can now write down the equation of my tangent plane. This equation is more typically written by moving the z minus z naught to the other side and getting z minus z naught is equal to f sub x times x minus x naught plus f sub y times y minus y naught. Notice that f sub x and f sub y are evaluated at x naught, y naught. Notice that this formula is very analogous to the formula for a tangent line for a function of one variable. The formula for the tangent line goes y minus y naught is equal to f prime at x naught times x minus x naught. 
So the slope of the tangent line f prime plays the role of, say, f sub x in this formula. Usually, the tangent plane to a surface at a point is a good approximation of the surface near that point. We'll see in the book and in class a few examples where things can go wrong, but, but for now, we'll just assume that the tangent plane is a good approximation to the surface for all the surfaces that we consider. With that assumption, let's find the tangent plane for the surface z equals f of xy at the point where x and y are both 1, where the function f is given by this formula. Then we'll use the tangent plane to approximate f's value near the point 1, 1. I'll write down our formula for the tangent plane from the previous page. We know that x naught is equal to 1, y naught is equal to 1, and z naught can be found by plugging 1 and 1 into our formula for f. So that's f of 1, 1, which is 1 minus 1 times 1 times cosine of pi, which is 2. By taking partial derivatives of our function, we can work out that f sub x is equal to negative y cosine of pi y. So f sub x at the point x naught y naught, that's f sub x at 1, 1, is equal to negative cosine of pi, which is 1. Similarly, we can work out f sub y as equal to negative x cosine of pi y plus pi xy sine of pi y using the product rule. Therefore, f sub y at 1, 1 is equal to 1. Substituting all this information into my general formula for the tangent plane gives me that z minus 2 is equal to 1 times x minus 1 plus 1 times y minus 1. This simplifies to z equals x plus y. So this is the equation for my tangent plane at the point where x and y are both 1. Now to approximate f's value at this x and y coordinate that are both near 1, instead of plugging them into f itself and getting an exact answer, I can plug these numbers into the equation for my tangent plane, since my tangent plane is approximating my surface. That means that f of 1.02, 0 0.97 is going to be approximately 1.02 plus 0 0.97, which is 1.99. In fact, if I do work out the exact answer by plugging in these numbers into the exact formula for f, I get that this expression is actually equal to about 1.985. So we can see that these two numbers are indeed close. In this video, we worked out the equation for the tangent plane to a surface at a point. The tangent plane shares a normal vector with the surface at that point and goes through that point. In most cases, we can think of the tangent plane as being a good approximation to the surface near the point.